It's Friday, April 19th, 2024. Welcome to episode 99 of the Alameda Postcast, an audio service of the Alameda Post. I'm your host, Scott Peeler. In this edition of the Postcast, the City Council addresses animal testing, sort of. The Alameda Police release March's crime statistics. Webster Street gets a makeover and Park Street is next. The Alameda Library steps up to help close the digital divide. The Oakland Roots advance in the U.S. Open Cup and welcome a Bay Area champion to their owners group. Plus, the annual invasion of the fluff balls has arrived. These stories and more on this episode of the Alameda Postcast. Our top story. Back in episode 75 in October, we reported that the city council had denied a lease for Building 11 on Alameda Point. The prospective client was biotech company Science Corporation, and the lease was denied primarily over concerns about animal testing. In January, the council voted 3-2 to two to direct city staff to draft an ordinance prohibiting animal testing and experimentation on property owned or controlled by the city. Last month, staff presented those proposals. This week, they were put to a vote, with the council narrowly approving a ban on animal testing or experimentation on property owned or controlled by the city. But like a relationship status on Facebook, it's complicated. Let's dive in. Currently, the city does not lease to tenants conducting animal testing, but the municipal code is silent on the topic. Therefore, such uses could occur. As of today, no other California municipality bans animal testing. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration mandates animal testing as an initial step in its approval process for new drugs, typically a critical step on the way to clinical trials. The FDA Modernization Act 2.0 of 2022 allows companies to use non-clinical test methods to demonstrate the safety and effectiveness of investigational drugs before or during human trials. This is a shift away from animal use. However, the FDA has neither published final rules nor established guidelines for non-animal test methods. And then add in this. The city's 2018 Economic Development Strategic Plan identified life science as one of six priority economic sectors. Currently, there are 35 or so life science companies in Alameda, employing about 4,600 people. So on Tuesday, the council looked at two proposals. Option A, prohibiting animal testing and experimentation on city-owned or controlled property. Option B, prohibiting animal testing on city-owned or controlled land except in the Enterprise District of Alameda Point for limited purposes and only when required for regulatory filing related to human or animal therapeutics, vaccines, devices, and antiparasitical medication. On one side, many members of the public were against the idea of animal testing. From a former primate care specialist in the research field to a board member of FOS, they voiced their opposition, as did 275 letters received. However, of those 275 letters, 269 were absolutely identical, with only nine actually coming from Alameda residents. Professors from USC, Cal Irvine, and San Jose State voiced concerns that an animal testing ban would have a chilling effect on the development of life-saving drugs, and that impact would be felt well beyond Alameda. The Alameda Chamber and Economic Alliance noted the potential negative economic impact due to a ban making it difficult to attract and keep life science tenants. Even the Carpenters Union objected, noting that many jobs are created by the expansion of that sector. In the end, option A, the complete testing ban, was rejected, and the council adopted option B on a 3-2 vote with Trish Herrera Spencer and Vice Mayor Desog voting against. Critics of option B, including Desog, noted that option B merely kept the status quo. So in the end, there's a ban on animal testing on city-owned property, unless it's necessary. As always, Karen Jensen's article does a great job examining all sides of this contentious issue. You can find it at alamedapost.com slash news. This week, the Alameda Police Department released the crime statistics for the month of March. We'll be taking a closer look into the numbers on Monday at alamedapost.com slash news. In the meantime, a quick look at some highlights. 114 arrests, a six-month high. Car thefts, meanwhile, hit a six-month low at 94, the first time that number has been below 100 in quite some time. Robberies and assaults were down, while catalytic converter thefts ticked up slightly to eight, still well below the peak numbers of a few months ago. Again, we'll have an analysis on Monday, including links to the complete report at alamedapost.com news. In 2020, in reaction to pandemic, streets like Webster were restriped and transformed in an effort to help restaurants and vendors, reducing travel lanes to one each way, and creating the outdoor dining parklets that are now a familiar part of the streetscape. With life returning mostly back to normal, another restripe of Webster has been completed. From Lincoln to Central, the parking lanes are back curbside. One major change you will notice, businesses had to choose between having a parking space or a parklet. So take an extra moment as you drive down Webster, parking has changed. 
For businesses like Fireside that opted to keep their pandemic parklet, there will be concrete barriers added to the street side. Other changes in store, buffered bike lanes and additional disabled and short-term parking spaces. In the long term, the City of Alameda Active Transportation Plan identifies Webster Street as part of the city's low-stress backbone network of bicycle facilities and prioritizes the design and possible construction of separated bike lanes by 2030 between Ralph Apposado and Central Avenue. For details on the Webster Street project, including pictures and a video ride-through, see Ken Durr's article at alamedapost.com news. It wasn't that long ago that a computer was a luxury, and many of us have wondered, what would we do with one anyway? But now? taken for granted. But what about those with no access? Welcome to the digital divide. The Alameda Free Library is helping to bridge that divide with their new laptop lending program. These are Windows 11 machines loaded with Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, as well as two browsers, Edge and Chrome. Patrons with a library card in good standing and a California photo ID may check out laptops for up to three days. Any personal data on the machine will be deleted upon return. Obviously, there are rules to be followed and some large fines if you lose or damage the machine, but kudos to the library for offering these tools at each of their locations. Details at the library website. The Oakland Roots have advanced to round of 32 in the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup tournament, thanks to a 2-1 win over El Farolito on Tuesday night. The U.S. Open Cup is the oldest ongoing soccer competition in the country, dating back to 1914, and it involves an initial field of 100 teams drawn from all levels of soccer. In the round of 32, life's going to get a little more difficult. That's when the Major League Soccer teams are added in, and the Roots have drawn the San Jose Earthquakes. Before then, Oakland returns to USL action for the next three weekends. The Roots are also making news off the field, with three-time NBA champion Sean Livingston joining the ownership group. The former member of the Dubs dynasty joins fellow retired pro athletes Jason Kidd and Marshawn Lynch, as well as rapper g Easy and Green Day's Billy Joe Armstrong. Mr. Livingston is definitely looking forward to his time with the Roots, saying, quote, playing in Oakland and representing the town were some of the most impactful years of my career. The energy from Oakland fans is special and a legacy I want to continue to be a part of for years into the future. End quote. Keep up with the Roots and local scholastic sports at alamedapost.com slash sports. Staying on the field, still no word on Alameda's Brian Wu, who started the season on the injured list with the Mariners. He's apparently progressing well, though, and it looks like there'll be some short rehab start just around the corner. If you frequent Crab Cove to Crown Beach, keep your eyes open. Spring is in the air, and that means goslings. Yes, our Canada geese have once again brought forth a new generation. You can see the fluffy peepers sticking close to their families. Take advantage of the cuteness now, because in about 10 weeks, they'll look just like mom and dad. Last weekend, the food bank players opened their run of Macbeth to great acclaim. Going on at the Healing Garden through April 28th, this presentation of the Scottish play features a few Alameda Post staffers on stage. As always, the show directed by our own Gene Kahane. Macbeth, great introduction to Shakespeare. It is the shortest of his tragedies. Take a look at some pictures of the presentation and get the director's take with Gene's article at alamedapost.com features. This month's walking history tour continues with Utah Construction, South Shore, and Bay Farm Island. Great chance to learn about the massive projects that literally built the island we know today. Two opportunities left for the South Shore Tour this Sunday and next Saturday. But tomorrow, Saturday the 20th, your last chance to join us on the Bay Farm Tour. Get set to join Dennis Evanoski and Adam Gillett by heading to alamedapost.com slash tours to make reservations and secure your tickets. alamedapost.com slash events for a guide to what's going on in Alameda. Alterina Playhouse continues their run of the Rodgers and Hart classic, Pal Joey. That show runs through April 28th. Friday night, Bay Area Radio Hall of Famer James Gabbert speaks at the California Historical Radio Society on Central Avenue. You can head back to CHRS on Saturday for their surplus sale and swap meet. On Saturday, ARPD's Spring Shindig returns to the Alameda Point Gym and Multipurpose Field. That's from noon until 3. As mentioned earlier, the food bank players continue with Macbeth Saturday and Sunday at the Healing Garden. As always on Saturdays, the Farmer's Market from 9 until 1. And after last year's literal washout, San Francisco Opera's Boheme Out of the Box comes back Saturday and Sunday at the Radium Runway. Sunday brings the Head West Marketplace to St. George Spirits from 11 till 5. More events at alamedapost.com slash events. Thank you for your support of local news for Alameda. To give a tax-deductible donation, head to alamedapost.com slash memberships. Remember, you can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, MSN, YouTube, Mastodon, Threads, Blue Sky, as well as our own subreddit. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel on Apple News. Find the postcast wherever you get your podcast, or simply tell your smart device to play the Alameda Postcast podcast. 
I'm Scott Peeler. I'll be back next Friday as the postcast turns 100.